Well, good evening, everybody. It's Zero back at you again with another History Buff Reacts video, and this one is Joshua Norton, the only United States Emperor. Now, somebody mentioned this in one of the comments in one of my other videos. I've heard of this guy, but I really don't know any specifics, so I'm kind of interested for this one. United States Emperor itself sounds interesting, but here we go. This video is sponsored by Wix. Wix. Look what this. Hey kids, Hi. let me ask you, do you watch the news often? Have yeah. you attended a school in your life? Mm -hmm. You ever look at a dollar? If the answer to any of these no, questions is yes, then chances are you're familiar with at least a couple United States presidents. But if you're like me yeah. prior to last week, You've probably never heard of a United States Emperor. Um, excuse me, good sir, but I should inform you that we're actually living under an Emperor as we speak, at least according to my degree from the University of Reddit. Hey, that's great. Whoa, look over there. It's someone criticizing Elon Musk. <gasps> and he's making typos. Anyway, let me tell y'all a- What was that noise? <laughs> What was that noise? That was both great and terrifying. I'm glad, what? <laughs> Alright, then fair enough. This whole start of this video is a bit mental, I love it. A story about a man named Joshua Norton. Norton was born in England at some point in the 1810s. Very little is okay. known about the guy's younger years other than the fact that he spent most of his youth in South Africa as part of the UK's colonization mm -hmm. programs. Yeah. He came to San Francisco in 1849 with a modest amount of wealth to his name and worked his way okay. up in the real estate and commodities markets to become one of the city's wealthiest citizens. All was normal in the life of Mr. Norton, until one day when he got a little too big for his britches. You see, in 1852, right. China was facing a huge famine, so they completely banned the export of rice. Naturally, okay. San yeah. Fran's rice price began to skyrocket in response to the reduced supply, peaking at 36 cents per pound. Norton saw this and decided to buy like a $25,000 rice shipment from Peru at 12 cents per pound, thinking he'd corner oh, the market. Okay. Keep in mind, that's around $750,000 in today's money. Little wow. did he know, that wasn't the only shipment coming out of Peru, and by the time he was able to sell it, rice was already back down to three cents a pound. Now, according <laughs> to my calculations, that put right. Norton at a net loss of a whole frickin' lot. He subsequently <laughs> got into a years-long court battle with the vendor who sold him the shipment, which only cost him more money, and ultimately left the man destitute. So, Norton did what anybody wow. would do after okay. losing everything. He drank a nice hefty dose of fuck it all and said, you know what? The courts Best can eat the my world. shorts, the house can eat my blouse, Peru can eat my shoe. I declare myself emperor of these United States. And I'm telling every newspaper in the city about it. And then he did. Now, the papers could have just <laughs> been like, what a lunatic. And that would have been the end of it. I can't imagine that the people at the time, like, they've got a president. They have a president. They've had a president for years at this point. Some guy from some backwater, well, San Francisco's not a backwater, but, you know, it wasn't built up as it is now. And just goes up, I'm the United States Emperor. What? <laughs> sure, go for it, buddy, go for it. You do you. But instead they said, you know what, this guy's kind of a meme. Let's publish his declaration, <laughs> just for gifts kind and shiggles. <laughs> People across the city had their laughs, and Norton's rise to power began. From here, he issued several more commands to the media, and unlike okay. nowadays, People loved having regular Norton updates shoved in their face. Among these announcements mm -hmm. was a decree in 1859 to formally abolish the United States- Okay, hang on a minute. Whereas, a body of men calling themselves the National Congress now in session in Washington City in violation of our imperial edict of the 12th of October last, declaring the said Congress abolished. Congress, he also gave out a mandate to both the Protestant and okay, Roman Catholic churches to formally ordain him as emperor. Although these edicts were ultimately <laughs> ignored by the powers Ooh. they were addressed to, they still served to build Norton's reputation around the city, and before long he was a fully-fledged local celebrity. He was easily recognized by passerby, typically sporting a blue naval uniform and a beaver hat with a peacock feather in it. Pretty soon, right. Norton could expect to receive the royal treatment wherever he went. People started to address him formally on the streets, he got to ride public transport for free, and he even got occasional tax payments from people sympathetic to his impoverished living situation. Tax 
payments. Sounds an awful lot like under the table donations. Hmm. <laughs> oh, and get this. Norton became so famous that toy stores in the city began selling dolls of the man for kids to play with. What? How many people can you think of that were so legendary that they got dolls made after them? You got Emperor Norton, Mr. T, and the bear that Teddy Roosevelt decided not to shoot. That's it, really. Also, though not backed <laughs> by actual law in any way, his declarations came to be taken <laughs> relatively seriously by the populace around him. For example, according to Norton, saying Frisco instead of San Francisco would be punishable by a $25 fine. Talk to any Frisco native, and you'll find that this attitude survives to this day. With the help of a local <laughs> printing firm, Norton even issued registered. his own currency, which was actually accepted by many residents of the city, despite having no backing behind it whatsoever. What? In fact, a few Norton bucks are still floating around today as highly valued collector's items. I tried doing the same thing a while what? back, but unfortunately, Onella rubles are still only worth their weight in Onella rubles. Of course, it wasn't all magpies and molasses for our good friend Josh. He was Jesus once arrested Christ. by a policeman named Armand Barbier, who wanted to throw him in an asylum for his apparent insanity. Needless to say, okay. when the public caught wind of this, they lost their fucking minds. Irate citizens <laughs> wrote complaints in droves. All the newspapers published scathing editorials towards the police department. Stray cats were thrown into wood chippers. I don't have any evidence for that last one. I'm just, you know, assuming based on what I would do in this scenario. <laughs> anyway, pretty soon, the chief of police got casually just throwing cats into wood chippers. Cool. <laughs> the memo, and Emperor Norton was released unscathed. Thankfully, Norton issued a royal pardon towards the man who arrested him, and from that point onward, whenever Norton passed a member of the force, they would stop and salute him. So, although in many ways this he appeared godlike, Norton was but a mortal. And, as mortals sometimes do, Emperor Norton decided to drop dead on a street corner on January 8th of 1880. However, Obviously. he left behind a legacy the likes of which most of us could only dream of. Beyond just the comedic value of his many exploits, Norton definitely had his prophetic moments, with some of his orders actually coming true decades after they were given. On multiple occasions, he ordered a bridge to be built between San Francisco and the Oakland Bay Area, which was eventually constructed in the 1930s. Mm, he also told okay. people to form a League of Nations to uphold international interests. Unfortunately, a man yelling in California wasn't quite enough to convince <laughs> the leaders of the world that such a thing was necessary. But who knows? Maybe little Nordo could have stopped World War One if he had been just a little bit louder. Nordo. I hope this tale oh, has inspired some of you young impressionable kids out there. Not because I expect any of you to succeed in the same way Norton did, but just because it's my personal belief that the world could always oh, use more oddball vagrants. Wait a minute. Oddball vagrants? Product placement. Sponsor time. Question. <laughs> do you do literally anything? I Great segue as always, Sam, but what the fuck? Oh, God. I'm assuming there's going to be nothing more in this video. Let me just check. No, it's just... That's fine. Cool. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Bad man on the street corner. Thinks he's going to be the United States Emperor. Interesting thing about the end, though, where one the bridge between San Francisco and the Oakland Bay, that actually got built. That's the... I'm going to butcher this because I'm not very good at geography, but isn't that Golden Gate or is that somewhere else? Either confirm it or deny it and then bully me in the comments. Feel free. Because <laughs> I'm not good at geography. Oh, well, what a story. Joshua Norton, definitely an interesting character. Let's put it that way. But thank you to the person who recommended this. I will try and remember who it was. I'll, I'll, I'll put it here. I'll put the name up here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Interesting story, as always. But yes, thank you for watching. If you did like this video, please make sure to press the like button and the subscribe button, which is... Uh, this mirrored camera's driving me insane. But yeah. I know I'm only a small channel, but it does help me a lot. And it keeps me going when I'm making these videos. But for now, I've been Zero. This has been History Buff Reacts. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.